that's good. We can review, get the PowerPoint up. We're gonna, we're gonna cover the South only, a little bit of Rhode Island, Island will be talked about here or there. So if you're either an A, Rhode Island, KFFL, Capital Classic, or Nationals, feel free to call in. We got the Zoom link in there. I'll pause the slide in a moment. I'm just going through what's been around this week. KFFL standings, if you notice, exactly the same. Why? Well, you see, no playing this week, more rain. Shepherdsburg flooded all throughout Friday and the Saturday. Not a pretty sight at all. And unfortunately, due to that happening, we had to cancel games up here. So the standing's about the same. That being said, a uh, bit of a change wild, here. Huh? Got a little wild, though, didn't it? Scheduling wild? Scheduling is a mess. Oh, yeah, no, KFFL no. is having a really bad October in general. And unfortunately, it's leaking in November. You talk about a prime time, they are finished. That's the big news at a KFFL. They have withdrawn from the remainder of the season. So they're done at three and two, which is kind of a shame because we talked about it. Prime time was a team that had a lot of potential. There was a lot of weapons on that team. That should have been a squad that should have made ways in the playoffs. But unfortunately, their season cut short. I told uh, them to prove me wrong at the beginning of the season. They did. They did a great job. Now they folded. So did they prove me wrong at the end of the day? Yeah. Like, prime time. It, it's sad. It's sad to see. It is sad to see because you feel bad for the guys who went out there every single week and was playing in what is kind of meaningless exhibition games now for them. There's no playoff for them. They're not going to be able to go out there. They can't join another team in the league. All because of just unfortunacy that happened with them and the management. I wish everybody the best of the situation. It's always tough to see, especially for a team that I felt was coming around. I feel like I would like to see a proper YAFFL team come over. Primetime was one that was playing once in a while, but borrowed heavily from 717 Gusto, wherever. We saw what happened back at Clash of York 3 with Primetime where they forfeited their day two game with the Baltimore Spartans due to just not having anybody. They only had four kickoff. Uh, a lot of speculation that some of their guys were playing over at Hanover that morning for YAFFL eight man. Um, yeah, I hate seeing it too, but like you talk about it, it's just a lot of nine man is snake bit this year in some way or another. And the curse is hitting Pennsylvania, Southern PA, that is. Not so much in other parts of PA. Very hard right now. Uh, prime time's folding. A big reason for that. York's not done. We'll see Gusto land at 717 throughout the rest of the year at Bye. some point. Baez as well. Hey, that's the big news we'll talk about later on. Baez Auto in the Capital Classic. Kent Page just confirming that as we were going on the air. Oh, sweet. Yeah, so Baez is in that foray. Starting to look like a regional championship there. They make that single bracket happen. I think it's time. I think that's the tournament for it. I did see Dallas do that. Uh, yeah. He, he dropped that little hint. I like it. I'm happy to buy as is in there. But let's back up to KFFL and the miserable luck they've had. You talk about a rain out a couple weeks ago that happened uh, back in mid-October, unfortunately. And then a week after that, they played. Only to have yet another rain out right afterwards. Yeah, well, one was the actual rain out. <clears throat> well, it did rain that day in Shippensburg. But the, the first one? Yeah, the forecast was going to be a 70% chance throughout the morning for what I was told. And so because of that, it didn't look good. There was cancellation. So it's unfortunate that happens. But at the same time, like, you talk about a string of bad luck. Saturday, that rain Friday was bad enough. I would not even play the games on Saturday. That was – you got to be precautious with fields at this point. Like, we've seen it before where we you ever do it in a field too much. It could cause a lot of damage to it quick. Um, it's unfortunate, but it's kind of messed the season up. We've seen this before. This is the third time we've had a fall season like this in this area. Uh, you go back to fall 15. I was there. You weren't. Um, we had that issue with County, and what they did back then was we ended up playing two weeks in one weekend, a Saturday week and a Sunday week. In fact, 
survivors that week, we had three games. We had to play against X Dogs on Saturday and then Broad Axe and X Dogs on Sunday. Yeah. And we got blown out in all three games and we dropped out of uh, Mason Dixon because of that. Before that, we were talking about entering a tournament as the Survivors and the Bearcats merged together. Would have been an early Ducks team. But we got blown out, and so we didn't go. Uh, that's what we did in 2015. 2018, we had rainouts up in North, and so because of that, they canceled a full week of we, games we on North. And almost a full game, well, torrential down for me. Didn't that happen twice that year for you guys? Uh, it definitely happened one time in this broad act. It happened, it happened. You it got was cold and everything. I was like, man, this. Sucks. You're talking about the game at South. No way. You guys yeah, had it happen North, twice. North. South had happened too. Yeah. A week after the Bassford Bowl, because yeah, I came yeah, up there yeah. and it was pouring yeah, down. Yeah. And then the next game up was like Ruckus against Broad Axe, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You guys played the first game and got destroyed. And I just watched from the car. Yeah, that game sucked, bro. We only had, like, that was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, like, when I was at Outer Banks, you guys had, had a game. Like guys, man. That happened to you all that when I was at Outer Banks, Four too. Four of them were puking because we were hungover. Great times. Yeah, it was, it was, like, right after, oh, man. Yeah. yeah. Was that, like, right after Cinco de Mayo or something like yeah, that? Yeah, you had Cinco de Mayo weekend. I and, think it was, yeah. like, the day after that. Somehow the Warriors that. partied harder than Broad Axe, but Broad Axe has a little more experience <laughs> holding their booze, I suppose. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're even better drinkers than you are. Yeah, right. Um, what a North terrible look. We kept playing. <laughs> yeah, I remember them watching we the right, video. That was North. Actually, that was nuts. Before it started pouring. But that's what's happened in years past. We've had two weekend days, and we've had one cancellation. From what I see here, they're canceling two weeks out, essentially, from the schedule for, for most teams, if not everybody. So we're just kind of doing a quick jump in the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, that was a lot days. Of game, Back on the subject. Here's my stance on this whole situation with playoffs. It's all about give and take because you could do both scenarios, cancel games. You could have can't, you could have had ball games played this weekend, which I think would have been cool because you could have had two full days in one week and then play off the next week. But I also know a lot of that's hard to do on the fly. When we did it in 2015, we were able to get everybody on the same page for it, which there's not a lot of guys on the same page here because everybody – is thinking one way or the other. We all, we can't do Sunday because of this, which I get. You were told Saturday. Right. That's a hard swing sometimes. This I is, a, know this is also not 2015. This is also not the same league or even same city. But speaking from past experience, seeing this before, that's what's been done, which I always thought was the best option, but it's hard to sway everybody 100% on that unless they're willing to give or take there. Right. That being said, nothing else is being played right now locally. Now, that also said, the decision that they made, I'm not sure what the full circumstances are. From what I heard, a lot of guys were not happy with it. Um, there was apparently a back and forth. <clears throat> Me personally, just play these damn games and get this over with, guys. I mean... I'll be real. The playoffs are the most important part of the year. Yes, you should get the games. When, when was the original date? Yeah. So originally it was going to be November 13th because the misfits and everybody were going to Rhode Island. Right. And so that was not going to be a date. And then lately misfits withdrew. But so 13th was always the date. It's just when the rainout happened, that pushed it back another week. Whereas what happened was with the week prior being rained out, they moved all those games into a span of a few days, a few weeks. And that's what they did to fix that. Hmm. Now, prime time dropping deleted some games. That was about three games taken out. Right. I think even more. I think five, actually. Yeah. yeah. Rough yeah. times, man. Mm. But like, that should have made things way easier. 
Like that. Nothing's easy. <laughs> Nothing has been easy, Ross. Let's be real here. Nothing's easy. Honestly, I hate it. I, but I mean, the original date's the best option, in my opinion. Thanksgiving, I get the conflict. You don't want guys just going there and not, yeah, and uh, not being able to play because of that. I also get – there's no winning no matter what here. The rain has kind of made that impossible. Thank you, sir. Um, I hate saying it, though, because it's a bad look overall for everybody involved. Back and forth, left and right. For all we know, we're going to find out playoffs and move to December 12th at the GCFA. Christmas. Christmas. Christmas weekend. Playoffs are now going to be Christmas weekend. No, no, not even Christmas weekend. February 29th, tune in. KFFL playoffs will be live. Move along. This is the standings for the league. You've had enough. I'm not going to read it off. This is the updated GCFFA standings. This was what was posted earlier, uh, courtesy of Workhorse Media and GCFFA. This is what it looks like right now. Punisher sitting in first place, seven and one. How you doing, boy? Uh, Panthers in there, six and one now. Misfit six and two, Chang Yang five and three, Reapers five three two and one, Empire four and four, Dogs four and four, Scorpions four and four, Takeover three and four. Fifty Sixers getting two wins this weekend. Now sitting the two five and one, and the Dragons at two and six. So as our GCFFA standings for the week, they'll be off this week. We'll be back in a few. XFFL, we've been neglecting them a little bit this year, but it's very accidental. I just really didn't even think of them as a nine-man league at the top of my head because in my head, all I could think of was their seven-man stuff that I covered back in January, which that's on me for just not paying attention and being ignorant to it. So my apologies there. I'm going to start listening off their stuff and what's going on up there in uh, PA. Games this week, Warhawks over the Grim Reapers, 21-0. Uh, Grim Reapers then turn around and beat the Savages 14 0. Monarchs over Berserkers 26 6. And Ballhawks over Degenerates 39 0. There's your standings right next to it. Ballhawks and Warhawks tied at 8 2 right now. We're going to talk about Warhawks a little bit more later on. Right now, they got the best lead or best record of the rec level teams, I consider the ones who are league teams that's played the eight minimum but has not traveled. Uh, we'll see what they could do going forward. Monarch seven and three, Grim Reaper six and four, um, Savages four and six, Berserkers two and eight, and the Generous sitting at 0 and 10. Let's keep going. Shout out XFFL Productions for that graphic. Big shout out to the, the present company. This is your teams that are not eligible for rankings yet. Uh, and the CBC top 25, they haven't had the minimum. Uh, Blazers, we may not see them again. Like I said, Rob Lay playing with Chang Gang right now. He'll be there with them in Rhode Island. Probably may see them in Nationals. We'll see what happens through this weekend. Outcast, the other Rob Lane team we see in the circuit, they're three and one. I don't believe we'll see them as well. That really wasn't his team per se, as much as it was another team out of Jersey that crossed over from seven to nine. Don't think we'll be seeing them the rest of the way either. Top Dogs, three and four, seven reported gains is what I got. They had a good run in Lydia's Legacy, but they have not popped up since. Show Me Football, two and two. They have a chance to be eligible after this weekend if they can go out and get one win Sunday. Um, not a ranking immediately could happen, but they could sneak somewhere in. We'll see. Gusto Land, two, four, and one. They will return to the Capital Classic and be eligible after the first game. Um so no matter what, they will be eligible. Unless they went out, though, not looking likely they're going to get ranked immediately, but a chance to get for position as they try to make a run in the Nationals. NWO, two and five. Haven't seen them since Lydia's legacy either. OTF, one and two. They're, they have not been seen since Charm City. Don't think we'll see them either. Um, Jets, zero and three. Once again, one and done to the Tri-State Spartans. Uh, don't think we'll see them either. They didn't have many numbers in the first place. Teams that failed to make the minimum qualifications among the rec teams, league only. Panthers six and one. Like I said, it's the Ducks and the Demons coming together. Right now, it's being treated as separate from th their records overall. 
unless it becomes a full-time circuit deal, then we'll decide what's classified as what, when, and where. Um, but right now they're above there, six and one. And then second is the Wolverines, three and one of the YAFFL. They're playing in the KFFL, doing something very similar with Baez Auto and the Elite Rebels. I'd like to see a mashup between these two teams, Panthers and Wolverines. We should try to find a way to make that happen. I would love to see a Panthers versus Wolverines matchup. It would like feel like an old school tag team match from back in the day. Ducks and the Demons versus what would essentially be Baez Auto and Elite Rebels teaming up. I think that'd be a very cool matchup to see. Moving on now, down the line. Right now, the teams have had a tournament appearance. These numbers have jumped up, as you have noticed. A lot of that is due to the fact that I discovered the XFFL standing. So this was what I pieced together to the best of my ability. I did not update for the records after this week. That was just me forgetting as I was kind of rushing this out. Didn't really get much time working on the slideshow today. So here's your teams that are on the rec level without a tournament appearance. They're at 52 overall. Um, the very bottom of it, you have four teams. UNR out of the Washington County Flag Football League. We, I don't think we'll see them again. The Generates out of XFFL, they're active right now up in PA. Not looking good going down the season. They're falling in the same line as the Finns from the Spring Jersey League and XFFL and the V Squad of the SFFA. And UNR as the only teams have had a win this year in the rec level. Uh, elite slash DX up there as well. They're at 0 and 12, forfeiting all their OMFFL games after an 0 and 4 start and taking three losses in the Charm City Classic. But they're not in this ranking. So let's take a look at the other XFFL teams. I don't know much about them. Like I said, I haven't done much research or watching on their league up at PA. I did work with them a little bit in filming, but I haven't really had a chance to get much experience in their league play per se outside of that seven man tournament we did way back in uh, January. There's the Miners. I know I saw them. I saw Mafia as well in Jersey. I did get a glimpse of those two teams, the Miners and Mafia, when I was at that tournament. Not too good of a season for Mafia, three of 13 overall in the XFFL Jersey League. Yeah. Troy City Titans, runner-up in Rhode Island. They're going to be 3-6-2. and two. Troy City Titans? Troy City Titans, dog. I believe Jamie confirmed uh, some of their core players will be playing in Rhode Island, but I can't remember who he said they're going to be with off the top of my head. It'll probably come back to me in a moment. Um, and then, of course, you got the A45 gang, Reckless Villains. 56ers, they surpassed the Reckless Villains with two more wins over the weekend. Um, see what they if the villains can catch back up, it's uh, they're not gonna come back. <laughs> Tivis is hot about that whole playoff thing. You better watch it. Ricky John Francis Walsh coming for him. Well, her, <laughs> oh, he's actually watching live. Tivis is watching live. Did that just happened recently. I just clicked on that. I Pro- out here probably, it's hard to tell. I like that Maryland jacket, though. Sold. That's old school as hell. I'm sorry, but I got to admire that old school quality. That's well, way I better. I went in there. I had to end up going into the room. I'd ask you to come on camera, but I know you don't want to. I will for that. For that Maryland hoodie? Like you're, I'm just going to put this He's one. just going to show off that Maryland hoodie real quick. And there it is. There's the hoodie. Where's the lot? Where? Just, just focus on whatever. Right there. Just focus on it. There you go. You're good to go. Everybody sees you. You're good. There you, there go. you go. That's vintage, dog. Maryland. Hey, shout it out to Coach Friedgen. They honored him over the weekend over in College Park as we beat Indiana. Um, if Jamie can talk about Michigan State, I can talk about Maryland. Um, taking a look at it. A couple I, other teams. Ooh, oh, that's a classic. That's retro. 27th, Rhode Island Spartans, 3-7-2. Rhode Island Flag Football B Champions. Congratulations to the Spartans. Very happy to see a Spartans team finally finish a championship game. Well, you got to think about it. Tri-State, St. Louis, all fall short in championships this year. Baltimore, they haven't had a chance yet, but they did go one and done in MFL playoffs. But the Rhode Island Spartans, are they the greater Spartans? We'll see. We need a 14 tournament, Rhode Island, Baltimore, Tri State, and St. Louis. Sounds like they at least 
be champions of the Rhode Island Flag Football League. Oh, I should have zoomed this out further. Geesh. Teens have had a tournament appearance. These are the ones that are above 500 or a certain that half. Show, of, to that show when I was like, don't name your team the Spartans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, they were mad about you. They're mad at you. Yeah, I'm out here inspiring everybody, man. Adults, kids, everybody. There you go, Ross Collins. <laughs> True leader. What a man. Well, they inspire. <laughs> Take a look at the teams that are that have more than four wins. Wild card four, four, and one. They're going to be playing this weekend with the Savages as Wild Savages in that tournament up in Rhode Island. So come together. Yeah. Let's we'll see how that goes. Demons out of the KFFL. They're going to be playing a few this weekend. They're going to try to move up in the rankings. They're eligible for rankings if they play in a tournament, but right now they're a rec level team considered to be in my eyes. Oh, I thought you were saying Demon Central. No, that'd be crazy. Savages of XFFL PA, they're five and thirteen. Ruckus, they're sitting at twenty third at five and five. I don't think we'll see Ruckus the rest of the season, unfortunately. Um, Rem Reapers, they're five and three out of the XFFL PA. Ill Town over in Jersey, they're five and one is what I got. I haven't gotten this week's results yet. Like I said, we kind of just do it at showtime what we got. Um, Stick Talk, of course, they're sitting there. Then Gryffindor out of XFFL New Jersey, they're six and five from last year. Monarch six and three from XFL PA. And then moving up, you got the Royals, the 401 pressure, the business. Gators out of the spring Jersey League and XFFL. They're seven and five from last season. Ball Hawks out of SFFA, they're seven and four. Bad boy seven and three attempt for XFL PA. And then Warriors at knife out of the Washington County Flag Football League. I wonder what happened to those guys. Yeah. Oh, Brock Klein out there the other day. Rushing the ball with Sean Moats next to him. Yeah. Did that happen? Yeah. <laughs> They're on demons together. Well, you mean rushing the ball? Like, yeah, like, yeah. Like, like, yeah, D line. It was a beautiful sight, dog. It was beautiful. I was so happy to see that again. It actually warmed my heart a little bit. I'll be honest. Yeah, that's a big We're out there. All right, top tier teams in the rec, number eight, West Virginia Venom, nine and eight out of the KFFL. Uh, they're going to be back in action this weekend against the Wolverines. So that's going to be a real test for Venom. They're going to have a chance to face off against them. Uh, what, well, from what I hear, they might be light this weekend, the Wolverines. So They're playing this weekend? Yeah, they're playing the West Virginia Venom. The yeah. Should be a good one. <laughs> Bullies 10 and 2 out of the XFL New Jersey are going to finish seventh there. Dark side with 12 and 8. They were also in the spring Jersey League. Uh Ball Hawks 15 and they're actually now 16 and 6 out of XFFL PA. Uh, they were the PA runner up last season. We'll have to see where they end up finishing at the rest of the way. No excuses sits at four for 12 and 1 out of the SFFFA. No, uh, yeah, they could, they're gonna be at nationals from what I've been told. Back in black, eight and three out of St. Louis nine man. They're at their runner up from there. From what I hear, no back in black for St. Lu- for uh, Nationals, so they might end up finishing there for the year. Beast mode, they're second right now, eleven and two out of the SFFA uh, league champion down there. They're not going to the Nationals though, from what I've been told. Um, so the league champion not traveling, oddly enough. Uh, the runner up will be there though. And number one, they're actually eighteen and four overall. The Warhawks out of the XFFL PA. Spring champions up there in Pennsylvania, runner up in the spring. Probably the best the best uh, rec team right now. And I say rec not in a disparaging way, but a non travel way. You don't really see them at, at many, if any, actual nine man tournaments. But they're 18 and four right now overall for the year. I'd say they're number one by a mile. Question is can they come up with another championship this upcoming season? Ball Hawks giving them the challenge. Uh, West Virginia Venom trying to sneak up out of there. They're kind of the dark horse in all this. They're trying to make a run late, see what they can finish out for the year. Um, big shout out to the Venom and what they've achieved this year. Yeah. Continuing on, teams that are not eligible for rankings, Affiliate Nation. This was mentioning them. AFN, of course, and Petty, they're playing as only us. 
Bulls, they were they dropped out of MFFL halfway through fall. However, I saw Kevin Fields. He's on the Maryland Venom roster for uh, Rhode Island. Big pickup. I'm excited to see how the Venom does up there. Um, and then primetime, of course, they folded over the weekend. So four teams that were eligible are no longer eligible. And those are your four. Unless they come back, we'll see. I don't think AFN and Patty are splitting up before national, though. Here are the teams missing the cut. 45th, DX slash Elite. They're sitting at 0 and 12 out of the OMFFL. 44, Rebellion. They're going to be playing in a tournament. They're 0 9 and 1 out of the Rhode Island Flag Football League. Steel, they're 1 10 and 1. They're back uh, in tournament play this weekend out of the Rhode Island Flag Football League. One and done in league tournament over the weekend. Can they bounce back in Rhode Island for the Steel? And then 717 Elite at 42 of two and eight record. And then New York Rebels hitting at 41st, 715 and one. They just dropped out of GCFFA for the remainder of the season, but they'll be back in Rhode Island. Oh, yeah. Tough travels, man. Tough times. Killer Bees at 40 of eight and 16 out of the KFFL. They were the spring champions. Not so much this fall. 39th, 30 birds, three and seven. They'll be back in Rhode Island this weekend. 38th, Tri State Spartans at 20 and 14 out of the KFFL. They've been on a downturn since the summer ended. Been a rough time for Tri State. Broad Axe at 37th, 9 and 4 out of the Washington County Flag Football League. They were the WCFFL champions back in the spring. Uh, still reigning champions. Don't think they'll see them the rest of the way, but they're going to be holding that spot for a bit. Nomads 36, 4 and 4. They'll be back in Rhode Island this weekend. Baltimore Spartans, 35th, 7 and 10 out of the LMFFL. Uh, they'll be back at Capital Classic. 34th, Maryland Venom, 8, 21 and 1 out of the LMFFL. Um, 33rd, Southside, 9 and 14 out of the MAFL. What? What? Why are you laughing at me? Definitely gonna be two brackets. Who says that? No, but I'll probably will be at this point. Let's take a look at the right the rest of the rankings. <laughs> um top 25 now. Maryland Titans, FOE. This this nothing has really changed from last week. So it's like there's nothing to really talk about. Really? All these teams will be a capital classic. Let the slideshow go. You'll see a shake up more so next week when we get to the tournament in Rhode Island and the results of it. But for now, it's about the same as it was. No major changes have been made. League's represented sitting there. Where are we at now? Overall wins. Empire got 20 more wins from their XFFL records. That's something worth mentioning real quick. Um, they had tw- They're actually undefeated in XFFL play. They are 20-0 and 0 in that league this year. Huh. Yeah, so Empire yeah, is definitely worth noting. Yeah, yeah, they're running XFFL jersey right now. And they're doing work in GCFFA where I mean, they have numbers. Ryan Toppy had mentioned they've had barely any numbers up there at times. Right. Been a tough go for a fall, man. It's been a tough fall for everybody. Money day, it's all that matters. Okay. <laughs> all right, let's get to where we at next. KFFL schedule for the week. Here we go. Going to kick it off at 9 a.m. with X-Dogs and the Outlaws. Third all-time meeting between these two franchises. X-Dogs won both of them. Back-to-back first game was 32-0. And the second game, 21-6. So who do you got, Ross Collins, between the X-Dogs and the Outlaws? X-Dogs. X-Dogs. There we go. Who you got? I got the X Dogs yeah, winning. If they have Sean, they'll be not fine. Take anything away from the Outlaws, but I still got the X Dogs. I, I agree. I, don't get me wrong. The Outlaws have played really well this year, but I think the X Dogs pull this one out. I don't think Chase Brady will contribute whatsoever, though. We'll see. Pure chaos and X Dogs. Second all time meeting between these two. They played last fall in Washington County. 
X Dogs won 21 18 and a great back and forth between those two teams. Um, your impressions of this matchup, Ross? I got X Dogs. You got X Dogs? I got X Dogs. <laughs> All right. Pure chaos of the Tri State Spartans. So you got. Ooh. Yeah, another. Uh, got? <laughs> me? I clearly haven't been paying. This has been a weird ass season for both of these teams. Yeah. Like, neither yeah. squad is anywhere where they were a year ago or even five months ago. It's weird. The last time they, the first time they played was last year. Spartans won that 34 0. That was after Spartans supposedly had guys quit early. Right. And then the second time they played was in county last year. Spartans blew them out in April. And then a couple a month later they played the Spartans beat them only by two. But I don't even know what chaos has. Chaos only has about it's gonna be who dresses more. Whoever dresses more turns the ball over the least is the winner. So I go with Ty. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> What? I'm just saying. Is this gonna, I got a tie I was, here. I was going to go with Ty, but I feel like I can I, I don't know who's going to dress more, and I don't know who's going to turn the ball I'm over gonna less. Guess, I'm going to go Spartans just because. Uh, if Marty's playing quarterback, then I think Chaos wins, but Marty hurt his groin last I'm, time. I'm, so. going, I'm going Spartans because of Eli. You want Spartans because of Eli? Yeah, Eli's an OG warrior. Oh, okay. So. I screwed up the righty. I forgot to put Venom second game on there. Way to go, you dumbass. Uh, uh, dude, I don't blame you for fucking up their schedule. I can tell you that. I f- I, they fuck up. I cannot schedule. follow along. <laughs> I literally can't follow along. I can't even follow along what I'm doing. I'm doing, I'm doing too much. <laughs> Venom and Wolverines, game of the week. Who you got? Go Venom. I'm going to go Venom, too. Demon Wolverines, who you got? Uh, I'm gonna go demons just because. Demons just because. I'm gonna go Wolverines just because. I'm gonna go demons because Warriors. That could be Clancy versus TJ Holston, by the way. That's. I'm kind of wondering if that is the case. I hope that is the case. All right, Rhode Island picks. This looks like shit. Way to go, Joey. He's time back there, though. He's brought Clyde and Cody Shukotsky on the line, along with Ed Guerrero. That's my ideal. I'm, the, I'm no longer signing off from Brock Clyde playing offensive line. <laughs> Why don't you come over there and try to coach them this weekend? Not too much going on on the side of the Always playoffs. I thought about it, but then they – they because they weren't playing. Now they are playing, so. Here we are. I already booked myself before they reannounce their third schedule for the weekend. All right, kids. Here's this weekend's Rhode Island Fly Ball schedule for Saturday. <laughs> Take a look at the games. Gonna kick it off at 8 a.m. on field one. We got Wild Savages, a merger of Wild Card and the Savages at a Rhode Island against Storm, a team that Jamie Wolf mentioned is coming down from Albany, ready to go. Oh, shit. Uh or up somewhere else in upstate New York. He says he wasn't really sure. Um, I thought I heard him say that they were coming down on a golf cart or something. I don't know what you're talking about. You were probably out of it by that point. <laughs> no, you're ass. Uh, <laughs> Savages and Storm, who you got? I'm going to go Wild Savages just because. All right, I'm going to go with Storm just because. <clears throat> Steel versus. I like, I like Wild Savages. I like, that. I like Storm because I feel like as the underdog, they're going to have a chip on their shoulder yeah. coming into this game. Yeah. They know good. nobody knows who they are, so they're here to make sure we know who they are. Field two, Steel versus Arkham's Finest. Arkham's Finest coming down from Boston, Massachusetts. Oh, shit. Steel from Rhode Island. They only have one win this year. They beat Rebellion. Really? I'm going to go with Steel getting their second win of the year. I'm cheering for the hometown underdog Steel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Brick Squad and the New York Rebels. Love what I saw out of Brick Squad in Urgent City. I think they have a chance to do it again. I'm going to go with Brick Squad. 
I'm gonna go with Brick Squad as well. They were uh, champions in 2018. That was I one believe. of my favorite teams of film this year. They, yeah, that game of Baez auto they yeah, had was, was insane. Game. It was a great game. Yeah, I had a great well, time covering them. Brick Squad is a good team. I look for. I, I'm gonna work my ass off to try to get up there because I do want to see these teams again. Like I, I have a lot of respect for Rhode Island, and I really want to get a chance to see the culture up there. Nine there. Yeah. Nine fifteen games. Wild Savages versus Riot Squad. Who you got? Uh, let me go Wild Savages again. Just because I don't. Uh, yeah, we'll go Wild Savages. I'll, I'll go Wild Savages. I'm going to go with Riot Squad. So I'm going Wild, Wild Savages. I think we'll do it. Ultimately, I, I think Riot Squad's going to win that game, but if Wild Savages win that first game against Storm, they got a good opportunity. To, yeah, it all know, depends on how come out wave. that first game, yeah. Ride the icy wave. <laughs> See how it goes. <laughs> Arkham Spiders versus Empire. I'm going to go Empire. I'm going to go Empire as well. I don't see how it won't be in a close one. Yeah. Yeah. Brick Squad and Dirty Birds. Ooh. I'm going to go Brick Squad again. I'm going to go Brick Squad as well. Storm versus Riot Squad. I'm going to go Riot Squad now. I'm also going to go Riot Squad in that one. Show me football versus Steel. Show me football. I got Show me football. <laughs> Shout out to the Lou. I got Show me football and all of it, man. Nope, jumping ahead. Way to go, asshole. I Spoilers. Ducks and the Rebels, who you got? Oh. I'm going to go. I'm going to go with Ducks, man. I can't, you can't sleep on Justin Thorne and company. Yeah, is it going to be the Duck Ducks? It's the Ducks, yeah. The Demons and then we're split for this one. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm going to go Rebels. You got it. You got Big Is? Yeah, let's go. All right. Ross got, Ross got Big Is. For a Saturday win. All right. Break on field one at 12 o'clock. Also at 12 o'clock, Empire versus Show Me Football. That is your game of the day of that field. St. Louis versus Jersey in Rhode Island. Yeah. And the Lou's got a little bit of uh, flavor coming up from uh, the DMV. A little bit of that Old Bay sauce, <laughs> that little spicy Old Bay. <laughs> Bay going up. I'm looking forward to seeing how this is going to go. That's going to be a good ass game. This is one of those I better reach. If I go on, I better be at the field at 12 o'clock for that one. That is factual. Yeah, that's a good one. No matter what I'm doing, I want to see that. Yeah. Who you got in that one? Yeah, show me. I got to show me as well. High noon, That's Ducks cool. versus Dirty and Birds. Good, yeah, I got to show me the good game. I think it'll be a competitive. Let me, let me add that. I part. think it'll be along the same lines as the Riot Squad game from back at Charm City they had. I think it's going to be a really That was a sick game. ass game. I think it's going to end up being a shootout. Okay. Ducks and Dirty Birds, who you got? We got Ducks. I got Ducks too. All right, Deuce. Chang Gang and 148 Outlaws. Who you got, Ross? Ooh. Is Outlaws going to have? What is Outlaws? I'm about to pull up that roster sheet. <laughs> what is the Outlaws? What is the Outlaws? They're 6 and 2 over Rhode Island right now. It's one of uh, Brick Squad's best players I've also seen play on that wall. So. Oh, yeah, because they did have a couple. So, what I was told was that a couple of the 148 guys were down in Notre City with them. That I can't confirm. Well, I saw Izzy play on 148 for Nationals. Yeah, so he's with them. And then the yeah. City played for Brick Yeah, they, this 148 didn't play Extra City. Their guys came down Brick Squad. That was a big part of uh, that team. All right, so that's what that's – hence my question. That's what. He'll probably be on Outlaws, I would think, maybe. I don't know the Rhode Island situation much. I'm trying to pull up the uh, – I'm trying to pull up Wolf Files. Is he a badass old DM, man? You got to give me a second, bro. <laughs> yeah. Think about it. 
Let me try to pull up Jamie's roster roster sheet on my end. All right, so flex passes all day long. (laughs) I'm gonna send you the uh, roster sheet so you can look at it too. Well, I figured you wanted to look at it. Um, It depends on what Outlaws has coming in. I haven't seen them since um, AC, really, was that game they had with – you know, it's interesting. I don't think I see them on here yet. Who that? Outlaws. Yeah, I don't see anybody on the roster yeah, sheet yet. Well, no, I see it. They're just yeah, in a weird. Yeah. They're in a weird category. Okay. Yeah, they're way down. I was looking at teams. Yeah, I was looking at it from a number of perspective. I couldn't find it. You were looking at it from the letters. Yeah, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, there's that roster. Yeah, but like there should be a good game between Chang Gang and Outlaws. I'm gonna go with Yeah. I'm gonna go with Chang Gang. I'm gonna go with Outlaw. All right. Nomads and Dragons, 115. Dragon. I'm gonna go Nomads. I'm gonna go Dragons. Browns and Venom. You want Venom? All right. I'm going Venom as well. Let's pour our guys coming up there. Chain Gang and Lions. I'm going to go Lions as well. I can't see Lions taking an L in their home state, especially in the first game out like that. Um, Nomads and Rebellion at 230. Yeah, dudes, who is the 148 quarterback for yeah. that? Because I'm looking at the roster right oh, now, and I can't – I know I, I don't see Matt Bailey, so it's not right. – or not that – no, Matt's uh, outlaws. I'm out of it. So, did I say outlaws? You can tell I'm – bro, you can tell I need some – I need sleep. <laughs> Your boy needs sleep. <laughs> um. Yeah, I was – Who you got in uh, No Matt Rebellion? I got nomads. Rebellion has no wins this year. I don't see them getting a win against nomads. Browns and the demons. Ooh. Yeah, gonna be this is gonna be a good one coming out the gate. This was a GCFFA league game last spring. I'm gonna go Browns. I'm, very tough loss about it. I'm gonna go with my guy Joe. I don't know. Peg needs my guy too, though. This is tough. I like both of y'all. I'm gonna go tie. That's my cop out. That's a cop out answer, but tie. Not, the same score as pure chaos and Spartans, but a better quality game. Um, let's see what we got. Outlaws, Punishers. Rematch of the AC quarterfinals. Outlaws, Punishers. That was the game where Matt Bailey threw three pick sixes and a pick two. 20 points scored on picks. Punishers. Punishers? I think Punishers are on a roll right now, and Outlaws won't stop them. Ooh. Dragons and the Reapers. Ooh. Yeah. We have Reapers. <laughs> Venom and the Demons. I'm good Demons in that one. Demons in that one? I'm going to go with Venom. Punishers and Lions. Lions. I'm going to go with Punishers. That's going to be a good-ass game, though. Five o'clock, the end of the day. On a Saturday, you got Lions. I can see what you mean with that. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm, That's a good one. He all got winning. (laughs) Last one, Deuce, we swear. Rebellion and the Reapers. Reapers. I don't see Rebellion winning either of their games. I mean, they're yeah. they'll play tough. Don't get me wrong, but I don't know. I don't know. Nomads have been tricky with numbers this year. Reapers though is fine. <clears throat> All right, for Deuce's sake, who you got, Ross? Winning B. 
who you got the the championship being? Who beats who? Wait, what? You just asked me two different questions. Yeah, who, who? Yeah, you heard me. Championship game B. Who wins? Who beats who? Go. Remember, all the teams in uh, B are the ones outside of field one at the, after the break. Right. Yeah. Only four A teams. Sad. You hate seeing that. I'm go show me. Show me versus. Brick squad. Brick squad. Okay. <laughs> Who you got winning? Show. Sure. So Ross has show me football beating Brick Squad and B. All right. Me personally, I'm going to go with Brick Squad beating Empire for the championship and B. I think that has potential. Yeah. And I got Riot Squad and Browns and that Luton Final Four rounding that up. Ducks is an outside team to look out for, too. That's a stack B bracket, though. A bracket, who do you got between Chain Gang, Outlaws, Lions, and Punishers? The Lions versus Punishers? I also got Lions Punishers. I got Lions Punishers. There should be a consolation game. <laughs> it will be whatever that is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go with – I got Lions win it too if they go back to back because they're going to want some redemption too I from GCFFA. Now I'm gonna go Lions. Yeah, I'm gonna go with an all road island special here. Rex Squad and Lions. And you got show me football and punishers and lions, right? I got show me versus Brick Squad. Either way, I I'm like looking forward. Squad in this tournament too. I'm not gonna lie. It's gonna be a fun tournament. I look forward I like, to it. I, like squad in this I hope I get a chance to get up there this weekend. But till then, everybody. He's Ross Collins. I'm Joey Blaze. I'll be back on the air next Tuesday for Blunt Talk. We'll be discussing the happenings of Rhode Island and looking ahead to RIFF playoffs. And, of course, Wednesday, looking at the KFFL playoffs. So, until then, we'll see you soon.